everybody. Welcome to Wellington. Welcome to highlights of this top of the table clash in the Benson and Hedges World Cup between New Zealand and England. New Zealand leading the way at the moment. Six wins from six matches. England also having played six matches, having five wins and one point for a no result because of a rain-affected match against Pakistan at Adelaide. So England have 11 points. One thing is for sure today, there won't be any rain affecting this match at the Basin Reserve because as we take a look around the city of Wellington, we can reveal a lovely fine day. That's the overseas terminal in the foreground, Lambton Harbour and the central business district a marvelous sight indeed on this sunday morning there's the carillion a war memorial which is adjacent to and overlooking the basin reserve and the pitch here is the same one as was used just a couple of days ago for the match between india and the west indies by world standards it's going to be a little bit low and slow it may offer the spinners some assistance later in the match as well but it should be generally speaking a pretty good batting surface let's go to the toss now and uh, the two captains for today are Martin Crowe for New Zealand, of course, but England have injury troubles. Graham Gooch is out with a hamstring injury, so Alex Stewart takes over the captaincy duties today. And both of those players are out in the middle now with our man, Grant Nisbet. Right, Crowe, you won the toss, and you're going to have a bowl. Yeah. Why is that? Um, we've just uh, we've chased quite well, and uh, I just think we'd like to get our, our side out here as uh, as a unit, field well, and do the job. Okay, marvellous atmosphere here too. It should be great, huh? Yeah. Tremendous. Okay, okay, all the best. Enjoys. Alex Stewart, I suppose the question we have to ask you is, uh, you're going at a bat first, but have you got 11 foot players? At the moment, yeah, but anything can happen. But no, we're starting off with 11. No Gooch, no Fair Brother, and no Tufnell. Okay, quite happy to bat first? Yeah, more than happy. That's what we'd have done if we'd won the toss. Okay, cheers. All the best. Thank you. Ciao. Let's check the teams then. England to bat first and Alex Stewart to go in first with Ian Botham. Then Robin Smith and Graham Hick at three and four. Alan Lamb back for his first match of the World Cup after a hamstring injury. Dermot Reeve has been affected by injury, but he has to play. Chris Lewis can't bowl, but he's down to bat at number seven. Derek Pringle is injury free at the moment. De Freitas has also had hamstring troubles in recent days. Richard Illingworth is the only left arm spinner. Phil Tufnell left out. And Gladstone Small completes the England lineup as a fit seam bowler. For New Zealand, John Wright is back to go in first with Mark Greatbatch. So Rod Latham has been left out. Then Andrew Jones, Martin Crowe, Ken Rutherford, Chris Harris. Chris Cairns retains his place ahead of Danny Morrison. Deepak Patel, the off spinner, and we understand he's going to share the uh, new ball bowling today. Ian Smith's the wicketkeeper, Gavin Larson, the medium pacer, and Willie Watson, another seam bowler. Well, it's a sellout crowd here at the Basin Reserve today. This match has uh, been one of those occasions which so many people in Wellington and the lower half of New Zealand's North Island have been looking forward to for a very long time. Uh, about 12,500 people in, absolutely jam-packed, a lovely fine sunny morning. England to bat first, their opening batsman Alex Stewart and Ian Botham. But a surprising new ball pair for New Zealand, Deepak Patel, the off-spinner, and the medium pacer, Chris Harris. Let's go to the action. runs of the very important match between England and New Zealand and rather strangely a misfield produces the first runs. So Bartram gets his first, might have come off a leg, we'll have a look and see, Larson getting to it. to Ian Botham and Jones won't be able to cut off the second. Down fine, there's no fine leg, so Watson will have to chase it all the way but won't get it. The first boundary of the innings and it's been struck by Ian Botham. Yes, well that ball would have been drifting well down the leg. Yep. Just a wee bit short there. Chase for Larson, but I think he can get it away. That's well hit, and the boundary is very close because the outfield is so fast. Oh, oh, missed him by Smith. So Stewart really had a heave at that, and Ian Smith couldn't get it. And that ball turned quite sharply. And the beefy both of them just eight from 24 deliveries. It's 
assumed. Here it is, just outside off stump. And a turn back through, hit leg stump. But how both have missed that one, I'm not quite sure. We'll see it again on a replay, I'm sure, later. But that's the first England wicket down in the seventh over, 25 for one. Let's just watch the shot that he plays this time. He gets back and he tried to hit right across it and work it on side and it went through him and took leg stump. But just watch the bat here is closed and went through the gate. Bartlett Larson chasing this. Outfield very quick indeed. And Hick is underway. Where for two runs, Martin Crowe joins in the applause for Deepak Patel. and Hick did the business. All the way by Hick, good shot, should go all the way. Starting to labour a bit, but makes it. Well, he goes again, it's a most decisive shot for Hick. And that one flies to the fence. Once again, uh, whether Willie got a, a gust of wind in his face on delivery there, he is wider of the crease, but it only has to be just short of a length under these conditions. The ball sits up and looks at you and says, hit me. Ball and edge, and that should run away for four. No slip in, and race down to the boundary. Too convincing with that shot. He gets a run anyway, Stuart. Down to a wide fine leg position. And there's the England 50. It's come up the 15th. Uh, well, slashes that through. Good shot. But races away to the front boundary for four. Well, you don't often see a batsman square cutting off the front foot, which was what Stuart did then. And that, of course, is an indication of how very slow this pitch is. the end of the over at 58 for one so a bit of readjustment going on out there it looks like Ian Smith uh, hello he's leaving the ground I wonder what's going on so it's Mo. Great bench. <laughs> Paddy great bench they call him not they don't call him Paddy just because he's putting his bats on but no <laughs> <laughs> I gather from down below Henry that Ian Smith has a migraine Poor chap, they're beastly things. If you see double treble vision you feel sick oh awful I do feel for him very much the off stump and bang and I tell you what all British listeners goodness charge your glasses after that one that was marvelous from 38 balls and it's 88 for one after 19.
started in the first over after drinks. And that's pulled away by Alex Stewart down behind square. And that's running away for Paul. Willie Watson has no chance of stopping that. successful one from Robin Smith. Yes, of course, he really turned that inside out, didn't he? And of course, the man sweeping on the boundary there was always going to have to chase it. was always going further away from him, spinning away. And that's a big boundary. Good shot too by Robin Smith. And he's got Lamb had a wee flirt. And great batch, the part-time keeper, wasn't able to hang on to it. Big blow for England. Yes, well, Adam Lamb, he does survive there wide, not quite across to it. The shot was probably on all the same, but Great Batch made a valiant attempt. But of course, he's a big man, Great Batch. Smith going down again. Yes, well, Jones just a little bit slow again there at mid-on. He didn't really attack the ball, just sort of waited for it to come, and he's got to be a bit quicker. Had he been, then it might have been just a little bit different. Well, it's really neither one thing nor the other. He's not right back on the edge of the circle. Something's got to be better. Oh, that beats Watson. It's going to go all the way. It's uh, Gavin Rush, isn't it? Down there, and that was a strike for England, which takes it to 155 for 3, 38 gone. Let's see if he tries to hit it over. 
Yes, he tried. He got too much bottom hand. He tried to get inside it. He fetched it onside, and Patel was always comfortably catching it. So England now 162 for four and 41st. of keeping Jones on. 47th over. Oh, trying to chop it down. This... I think great, uh, great match may actually have dropped that. Yes, and interestingly enough, Andrew Jones was making a very prolonged appeal at the... I think he was appealing for LBW because it actually hit the flap of Pringle's pad. Oh, big hit! Got me out! straight to Crow and they'll only get one. He rolls it back to Harris. So the innings has ended. The round two is achieved. And 
Yes, New Zealand did marvellously well and England scored exactly 200 in their 50 overs, a run rate of exactly four. So New Zealand's target to win 201. 200 for eight. Things were going along very well for England when Hick and Stewart were together. It was 95 before that second wicket fell. And then when uh, Graham Hick was out with a score at 135, England never really recovered. Robin Smith batted very usefully, but uh, struggled on the slow wickets. Alan Lamb didn't uh, get going today. His first match back after a long breakthrough injury. And Dermot Reeve played a useful little hand at the end to score 21 from 20. Six deliveries. 200 for eight, the England score in 50 overs. Deepak Patel and Chris Harris opened the bowling. Chris Harris was there at the end as well, and both of those bowlers took two wickets. Two wickets also for Willie Watson. He took some stick early on from Alex Stewart and from Graham Hick, but he came back well. Chris Cairn struggled again today. Sadly for him, the faster pace on the slower wicket meant that he wasn't the most effective New Zealand bowler. But Gavin Larson and Andrew Jones, with uh, their slower paced bowling, certainly did a fine job for New Zealand. today, Rod Latham not playing, and that'll be interesting to see just how he gets on. And he's underway, just sliding it off the face down the third man, so both men pick up a single in their first ball. De Freitas to bowl to John Wright. Australia in the first match, wasn't it? Yes, the very first game of the tournament. He walked inside, it hit the leg stump, and here today at the Basin Reserve, we'll have another look. Walking inside, and bingo, leg stump. Well, that is a mortal blow for New Zealand. That's the one thing they didn't want to happen. Equally, when it had last happened against, uh, well, we'll come back to that in the first match against Australia. Meantime, New Zealand five for one. says no, and a leg by is taken. Welcome back, Richard. Yes, Grant. Well, Freitas was very keen on that. That's not a bad shout. Perhaps just fractionally outside the off stump. A little bit of doubt there for the umpire. Ian Robinson given in the favour of the batsman. Big hit. He's got under it. He should be all right. And he gets two. Well, he certainly got under it. Great match goes for it. The next four runs. That's his first four. And a typical great match shot. It was when that ball was foolish and wide of the off stump, and that allowed great match to freeze arms and go over the field. Well, 
chance there for hit. Craig Birch is coming for his uh, third. That's well run. again, a bit of bottom hand. But it's Will Randall, look at that. Nicely played by Jones. That's a beautiful time shot, that's going to run away to four. <laughs> and this is going high in the air from the middle. The Premiers won't get to it. And they come back for the third. Jones getting it fine, he might get a two point for Pringle, he will. And so the score moves to 68, 68 for two after the 14th over has been completed. circle but he didn't like where um, that man was at point he thought he should be at cover mind you it's all very well to play catch up captain see that Jones getting hold of it pretty fine ball up Gladstone Small won't get it so far more up Jones I tell you what Gladstone Large when we got out so <laughs> many it was, um, it was going some all over pitching swung away by Jones that only for one the last ball of the day, wasn't it? A shot now. End of the over, 86 for two. Lovely shot from the ground. That's a good one from Stryker. And that runs up the New Zealand 100. A classic shot from the ground. 101 for two in the 23rd over. Yeah, it's just a, a 
too much width outside the off stump, short two, and Crow playing that beautifully. In fact, he needs another 10 runs, Grant, to be the leading run scorer in the World Cup in this competition. Uh, it's still the brisk northerly blowing, and Illingworth the bowler. Catch Jones it. lifting, and away it goes. Lamb trying to stretch on after it. That's for it. Well, Lamb, he almost attempted a little dive, but was probably very wise to pull out. But Andrew Jones going over mid-off. Uppish. Didn't quite get it right. And Lamb had a long chase. The end result for Jones is a good one. It makes him 49. That's eight fours now in his innings. And there's the 50 for Andrew Jones. Lamb has another chase. And they should run three. And that's another very good 50 for Andrew Jones. There's 24 and he's third in this World Cup. Well, he is a model of consistency. They're a bit short, and Crow likes that shot. And he hit to perfection. Yes, although it was a bit of a gimme, Crow still had to put it away and put it in the gap, and he certainly did so. Short and wide, very controlled by Crow, letting it come on, using the pace of it, clipping it just wide of that man uh, at a deep gully position. Jones hits it firmly in the air, just out of the reach. Off square leg, he tried to get it. Uh, Smith tried to get it. And it was just over him. Yes, he hits it very square here, and the man has been brought in. There was a man out there for Crow. He's been brought up inside the circle. So Jones has moved to 60. Oh, yeah. oh, he gets it away past Smith this time. Now they're on the way too. It's been very fast down there. It does. And that's his highest score in the World Cup of 1992. Andrew Jones gets his 11th boundary. And he moves to 70. And takes the New Zealand score to 152 for two during the 30 second hour. Swoops, and there's no one out there, so that's going all the way for four. Well, Andrew Jones is starting to take it to what's going worth now. He's taken his score to 74. It's 156 for two, 32 completed. Andrew Jones, of course, Mark Greatbacks are all in wonderful touch. And there we are, there's the 100 partnership up between these two. Wonderful effort. And the crowd here at the Basin are a little bit slow to realise that it's up, but uh, they're now acknowledging it. And he's got that one fine. Andrew Jones, he's done that well today. And that races down to the final eight fence for four. Into the over, Dunstan scores first, 168 for two. A little short of a leg, this could be tight. And, oh, he's out. Yes, that was out. Andrew Jones didn't put his bat down. Ian Robinson signals you're out. And a good throw there, hits the stumps, and perhaps Andrew Jones a little more than that slide in his back, but... Uh, Oh yes, he's going up to the tremendous clap that he so richly deserves. Listen to it. Graham hit the thrower, and yes, he's out. Almost trying to avoid the throw, but uh, he's gone. And New Zealand are 172 for three. Visibility by Hick, but it was no lackadaisical running there by Jones. I mean, had he wanted to avoid that, he could. So back at back live, Martin Crow just clipping it away behind square. Philip De Freitas does the fielding. So things pretty well under control, although Jones is out. Crow's there on 49 now. Yep. Oh, 
Well, here's the 50 from Martin Crow. Just dropping it down in front of him. Racing through. And Martin Crow getting a good hand from the Basin Reserve crowd. Another great contribution in this World Cup. What a phenomenal record he has had in this World Cup. And when you compare it to what went on earlier in the summer against England, Crow's transformation has gone hand in hand with the transformation of the New Zealand side. It's been inspiring stuff, and it's his form that's made him lead the, job, the, the side as well as he has. It's interesting, isn't it? Look how many uh, singles and dabs around the wicket. He's really kept the score moving without hitting a lot of boundaries, picking up two. He knows he had to stop. down there to long on for four. It was a bit bottom-handed. It wasn't like those lovely pure drives you used to produce. But um, <laughs> it's one of those days when everything's going for him. <laughs> oh, nice so, of you, he knew exactly what he was doing. He placed it beautifully and hit it for four. And Martin Crow goes over the top again. And he's hit this one pretty well. And one, two bounces into the boundary down there at long on. So there we are. Baby's a little worried about the rain arriving. One, eight, three for three. Let's take a look at the worms. The run rate shows New Zealand comfortably ahead, and New Zealand now just 11 runs away from winning. 201 is their target. They're 189 at the moment. The New Zealand team up on the uh, players' balcony looking very content. Looked at one stage earlier this morning as England were heading for a good total, 230, 240, even more. Now to Freitas, 41st over. Crow pulls him away, lovely shot, and four runs. Yes, well, it looks so like Martin Crow wants to get the match over in the 41st over. I suppose the early shower is always the warmest. So why stay out there any longer than you have to? And he really got onto that one very well. Chris Lewis having no chance of cutting that one off. Crow goes for it, and this could be it. Sailing out to defence, and New Zealand have beaten England here at the Basin Reserve by seven wickets and remain unbeaten at the Benson and Hedges World Cup. Another marvellous batting performance from New Zealand and the victory achieved by seven wickets with one ball left in the 41st over. Wright went early but then Great Batch did the job again. Today making 35 and that work was carried on by Andrew Jones' run out today for 78 and Martin Crowe there at the end for 73 and Ken Rutherford with him. New Zealand thoroughly convincing winners. England had their bowling problems. Pringle couldn't complete his seventh over. He was injured. De Freitas was expensive, but then he's had a hamstring injury recently as well. Botham took one wicket, but he went for nearly five runs per over. Ellingworth did go for five. Graham Hick bowled usefully enough, but really too expensive. And Gladstone Small, the big surprise was that he came on to bowl so late in the New Zealand innings. And Gladstone Small was one of the few fit bowlers that uh, England had. But New Zealand, by far the better team on the day. And uh, Martin Crowe, the New Zealand captain, picked up a further $3,000 as the winning captain today. And appropriately enough, he got it from a former New Zealand captain, Bevan Congdon. In fact, right, he put it uh, nicely, really, when he, he said that we do owe the England side um, our best performance. Well, a pretty bad um, day for the and, England. Uh, so the, like, every, every player was keyed up to play today and do well. And, uh, you know, we really did, did put on a good show. Well, the other thing about it is people talk about the batting and the bowling, but uh, what about the fielding as well? There's an awful lot of catches being hit high into the deep these days, but they just yeah. keep on being, being snaffled, don't they? Yeah, yeah, and that's, uh, that's due to the, the, our practice habits. Um, you know, Wally's working the lads well in practice, and uh, we're catching them in practice, and that's obviously important. So, um, you know, the, the bowlers, our slow bowlers, are getting the ball, uh, you know, to sort of just not come on, and, and of course the catches are going in the air. And again, more innovation with Chris Harris opening the bowling today. Yeah, well, I sort of I had a funny morning because I just felt like sort of trying lots of things. Um, you know, even even bowling first on that wicket was probably uh, you know a tad risky, um, but uh, I felt that we're, we're chasing well and um, and we work well in the field first up, so I stuck with that. Uh, but I thought Gavin Larson was the key to our whole bowling effort today. He really pulled us back. Um, superb effort from the local boy. It's great. Now it's time to introduce uh, the captain of England, Alex Stewart. Well, uh, Alec, it's a different scenario to a month ago. Uh, can we ask sympathetically what happened today? Well, we didn't perform as well as we have done so far in this tournament. Simple as that. Any excuses regarding injury, illness in your team? No, I don't have excuses. No, we played poorly and uh, New Zealand deserved to win on the day. What, uh, any particular reason why things 
went so badly for you today? Is it? No, it's just one of those things. You know, we, we were a few runs light, um, and then they got off a good start. Batchy played well, and then Jonesy and, and Crowey played well, and uh, we didn't compete as we should have done. All right. So you bit, do uh, you think, uh, out of touch pl uh, playing in Australia recently, coming to a slower pitch back yeah, here, a know, month away? Yeah, obviously. It was a slower wicket, um, so we played all our games in Australia. Um, we played here a month ago and cleaned up. Just one of those things, just one of those days. But uh, we'll be looking to correct it in the next game and the future games. Now, what's the latest on the injury and the illness toll inside the camp? You tell you know, me. <laughs> Derek, Derek, what was Derek Pringle? Lower back problem, is it? Yeah, I think it's a side. We're not too sure at the moment. He's just seeing a physio now. Um, but there are a few injuries, but you know, time will tell. We've got a full side for whenever it is Wednesday. Wednesday against Zimbabwe. Is there, in fact, any consideration being given in the party to bringing in an extra player no, or two? No, not at the moment. No, we'll uh, face that nearer the date. Well, it's been a tough day for England today, but Zimbabwe at where, Albury? That's right. Yep. Right. Yeah, we look to win there and uh, work it out from there. We're in the semi-finals and look to get in the final and then win it. Well, this is a day that few New Zealand cricket fans will forget for a while. New Zealand's were unbeaten as they came into this match, but then we all knew that England had been such a fine side here a month ago. Nobody really expected New Zealand to win this match so convincingly. They did it with nearly 10 overs to spare and with seven wickets in hand. And New Zealand now with this outstanding record of seven consecutive wins in the preliminary round of the Benson and Hedges World Cup are very much favourites to get right through to the final. And who knows, after beating England today, New Zealand may now be entertaining for the first time hopes of actually winning this uh, World Championship of Limited Overs Cricket. So that's it from uh, the Basin Reserve in Wellington. New Zealand big winners over England by seven wickets in this round-robin match.